Hello guys! So in this tutorial we're gonna recreate tilt shift effect and as you can see uh, it contains of several pieces. Two areas, near and far plane, they both are covered with blur and the area where the image is sharp. So when we know this we can start making things inside Unreal. Um, as I did in my previous tutorial uh, about bokeh effect, here I'm gonna do the same. So on the when begin play in my character uh, blueprint, I'm gonna add dynamic component and it's gonna be the post process component. The reason is uh, quite obvious. So if you take a look at my outliner, here I have selected a post process volume, but it lacks uh, the essential parts uh, of this tutorial. It's called sensor width. It's the attribute that should be changed uh, during our gameplay so the uh, tilt shift effect is valid. But if you take a look at the blueprint here, if we extract settings from our dynamic component, here under the structure we can add actually the sensor width. Now let's talk about how the sensor width and aperture uh, works together. So guys, I found a good article which explains theory better than me. And as you can see from the picture, all that we know all that we need to know is that with the size of the sensor, uh, the depth of field grows. And that leads to an interesting artifact that we should extract and use in Unreal. So, depth of field, or in other words, bokeh, uh, is used to uh, apply over our near and far planes. And we need to maintain the size of an object, so it should be the same as we have here but with the bokeh effect that we should receive from the bigger sensor here. So guys, before we start I should explain my setup, so you may see that theory works correctly. I do have uh, two cameras, it's the default one and the sign, and the reason is that I need to uh, check whether the default and side camera works the same way, because we're gonna uh, like create post process which makes our camera work as if it was the sign camera. Well, both of my cameras are attached to the same camera boom. The lens is 100 unit and the height of it is 70 unit, so it's nearly the uh, level of an eye. Next thing is to maintain the field of view and aspect ratio, both of the sign and follow camera, because uh, field of view in the future will help us to make the trick for the tilt shift effect. So, follow camera first. Here you may see that uh, I have the default field of view of 90 degrees, aspect ratio 1.77 and aperture is 4.0. Next thing is to check the sign camera setup. Here I need to adjust a few things. First is to be the 16 by 9 DSLR type of camera with the default sensor width of 36 millimeters. Now current aperture is set to be 4 and as you can see field of view is locked. But if we change the focal lens you may see that the field of view changes. So 18 is for our 90 degrees. We need to provide few more elements to make our follow camera work as if it was the uh, sign camera and this functionality also will help us to get uh, the desirable tilt shift effect. I'm talking about this one. So we add post process component and extract settings from it. Next we extract set member in post process settings and here we can define uh, an attribute that we uh, would like to change. Uh, the good point uh, to make this type of logic is that we can provide only those attributes that should be changed. The whole structure will be unchanged and this leads to better performance. So we need to have the aperture, sensor width and the focal distance. For the focal distance we provide the lens of our camera boom and because they both are set to be to the one parent, I mean my cameras, that will lead to the same uh, like focus point. Now uh, you need to provide the sensor width of 36 and the aperture of 4, so the same that we have for our sign camera. 
and let's launch the game. Here I have the debug functionality, which ensure that everything works fine. It's simple switching between the cameras. So now I launch the game. I have my default camera. Now I have my sign camera and default one again. I'm gonna change the aperture of my follow camera to 0.2. So it's gonna lead to very heavy bokeh effect. So the follow camera, the sign camera, the follow camera. So with this done, now let's talk about the tilt shift effect. First thing to change is the sensor width. Because if you remember from an article, uh, the bigger sensor leads to actually the bigger depth of field area, which we need to cover our near and far plane. So let's multiply it by 4. Uh, aperture I will leave as it is. Now let's launch the game and see what we have. So apparently we have an artifact and that's due to our setup. Because if you take a look, If you take a look at the picture of our tilt shift effect, you may see that object uh, in the focus located somewhere in the center of the picture. We need to adjust the lens of our camera boom. So now it's 500 units, sensor size the same, aperture the same. Let's launch the game one more time. Now, as you can see, we have the better results. Here at the top, we have the focus and we have the near plane and the far plane, but they are not the same size. Let's fix this issue and proceed. And if you take a look at the viewports, we need to adjust two uh, values an offset on our that axis, because this one was only to ensure that the follow and the sign camera works the same way. We actually don't need the sign camera at all. And let's make our uh, camera boom lens a little bit longer. Let's say 6,000 units. 600 units, I'm sorry. Um, I guess I also changed the aperture to a little bit bigger value so my blur won't be so heavy. So, as you can see, uh, we have achieved quite good uh, tilt shift effect. We have near plane and far plane covered with the blur, and we have the area in the center of our picture, of our screen, which is totally in focus. It works in dynamics, so if I move, you may see that the focus changes. The blur is applied over these boxes. The last part of the tutorial is dedicated to making uh, our prototype look uh, better. Uh, in my opinion, uh, tilt shift effect uh, finds its place when it's combined with sort of dolly zoom or vertigo effect. And here comes the field of view, uh, like the attribute I was talking about earlier, uh, that actually changed the game uh, itself. So let's make field of view two times lower and change camera boom lens two times higher. This will lead to sort of shift between the perspective and orthographic uh, direction of our game. I'm also going to change aperture, so I don't want to have a lot of blur. And now I'm going to launch it and you will see the results. Now that looks gorgeous. You may see that a little bit autographic projection in combination with the tilt shift effect really brings new direction, new art direction of the game. I've prepared one more demo as the bonus. As you can see, it's the top-down character it has the same setup as uh, the third person with some differences. So as for the spring arm, 
the lens is higher, it's 5000 units. Uh, also minus 30 degrees on the Y uh, X rotation. And for the camera here, perspective and field of view, 15 degrees. Also, because it's the top-down game, uh, it's controlled over the mouse. Before uh, the demonstration, I simply want to make uh, one more visual uh, change. Here we have selected all the static mesh actors and I'm going to change their rotation on 45 degrees. And a little bit shift here. Now, when I launch the game, you may see the whole beauty of the autographic uh, projection combined with the tilt shift effect. Just beautiful. So guys, I hope you like my tutorial and as always, uh, please subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback, press like button, uh, press the bell and in case you want to support me, I do have Patreon page which you can find uh, via the link under the description to this video or on the main page of the YouTube. See you soon guys.